Do you mind if you don't get back the Okay, wheel. here he comes. Here he comes. There we go. There we go. Oh, oh. wow. Bernie, let hey. me hold him. That's great. You gotta get him right here. Ah. Oh, let me tell you, it's a cold fish. <laughs> now, is it worth it, though? Oh, oh, this is terrific. Oh, I love it. Well, terrifically fun, you bet but also terrifically cold. Not just a fish, but that day was colder than predicted, something that often happens when you go ice fishing. If the temperature doesn't get you, jump on a snowmobile and try the wind and showers of flying snow that stick to your clothing. Boy, that's always cold. Even if there's no snow, the wind by itself can do a good job penetrating your outerwear, even on days when the sun is shining. But the worst enemy of ice fishermen is water. Long lasting cold that can be slippery too. Over here, Joe. Yeah, we'll we'll this whoa, whoa, whoa. John, don't step in the hole. <laughs> that was John stepping in the hole. That was John falling. <laughs> well, John wasn't the only one who hit the deck. Watch my boots coming in on the left side of the frame. The hazards of ice fishing are far outweighed by the fun that is if you're prepared. Now this is what I needed on my boots to prevent that fall. This is really inexpensive. These things are only a couple bucks. They're called ice creepers or grippers you put on the bottom of your boot like this. They, they're not very elaborate, not very expensive, but they can be lifesavers. They fit on the bottom of your boot, provide a little extra traction there across the ice. Again, they don't look like much, but they can help prevent those nasty falls that could be dangerous, especially guys our age. I mean, you don't even have to play ice hockey to have a nasty fall on the ice. But let's not dwell on safety right now. Let's talk about a, something that is of much bigger concern to most ice fishermen and people outdoors in the winter, and that is warmth. How do we stay warm? Well, the whole goal of the clothing we wear is to retain the warmth in our bodies. You know, keep our hands warm and our heads and our feet and everything warm uh, by retaining that warmth. We generate heat in our bodies when we digest food, turn it into sugars. Now, this is something that is widely misunderstood by a lot of people. Ice anglers, and you see them out on the ice all the time, they'll, before they go out on the ice, they'll have eaten a breakfast of bacon and eggs and all kinds of proteins like that meat, sausage, bad. That is hard to digest. It is difficult for the body to digest and actually when you eat bacon and eggs for breakfast, your body is going to work very hard at digesting that and sap a lot of energy that could be turned into heat into digesting that food. Now when it's all digested a couple hours later, your body can start using the warmth it generates to heat you. But until then, it's going to be digesting that protein. What should you do? Two things. Now, I don't mean to sound like Wilford Brimley, but oatmeal is ideal or pancakes, uh, toast, things like that that are carbohydrates that can be con converted to sugar. Those meals before you go out on the ice, especially in the morning when it's the coldest, will keep you warmer uh, throughout the next couple of hours. Honestly, try that out. Carbohydrates, pancakes, and oatmeal for breakfast. Now, after you have that and you're, and you're generating a lot of heat, how do you keep it within your body so you can stay warm? Where do you get cold? Most people are going to say one of two places. Either my hands get cold or my feet get cold. Very few people say, my head gets cold. You know why? Your head rarely gets cold. This is the way your body works. Your body, your heart is pumping blood uh, throughout your body and the first priority is your head. That's where your brain is and your body puts the blood to your brain and to keep your brain warm so you can stay alive. Now, if your head is cold, you're out and the wind is whipping like it often is ice fishing, it's, your body is going to automatically curtail the circulation to your hands, to your feet, to the other extremities so your head stays warm. So you say, doggone, my feet are cold, my hands are cold, my head is warm. Well, put on a hat. That is the first thing you can do, the most important thing you can do to stay warm outdoors in the winter, a hat. The best kind of hat to use is a knit hat. Here's a couple knit hats here. Geez, I've been wearing these since we started the show. In fact, I wish I could remember who sent these to me. A couple people made these up and sent these to me in our first year on Michigan Outdoors. Write to me if you recognize that, and you did, because I I've, I've don't, haven't kept track of that, but I'd sure like to. I've worn these things for 10 years on TV, and they're great. Now, this hat is a little bit bigger and more comfortable on my head when I put it on. But if I'm really cold, I'll wear this one, which is smaller, 
and more snug, and that keeps my ears close to my head, and I stay a lot warmer, frankly, with this one if the wind is blowing. If it's really cold, you've seen this goofy looking hat that I've worn, uh, I got this up at Tip Up Town. Tom Sawyer's Leather Shop in Houghton Lake sells these. Uh, this is a, a sheep lined hat that is extremely warm. This will, in fact, you'll roast inside this. But while your head is warm, when you're that warm, your hands and feet are gonna be warm too, generally. So this kind of hat is something that is kind of a special use because it really makes you sweat very often, but on those cold days it can really be the ticket. Now if your face gets cold, a lot of people wear something like this, the mask. Now I don't prefer these masks that go over your whole face and just have the eye holes in it because of my glasses. It's kind of difficult, it puts pressure on the glasses, gets them bent and out of shape. So what I do, instead of wearing a mask like this, which is actually a good thing to wear, is I use a scarf. Now I'll put a scarf around like that inside my hood or my parka and wear it up like this and then bring the hat down over my eyes. And that way I can stay terribly warm. Also I can take these off, which is extremely important. If you dress in layers and you have different things you're wearing, you can take them off to adjust your temperature. So eat a breakfast of carbohydrates, make sure your head is warm and stays warm. Even if you say, boy, I'd like to take my hat off, it feels good, leave it on because the rest of you will stay warmer. What do you wear on your hands? You see a lot of neophyte ice fishermen, people outdoors wearing gloves. Nothing could be colder to wear than gloves. Each of your fingers is independently trying to keep itself warm. And a lot of these gloves, like this one, has good grip on it and all, but doesn't have much insulation. So that can be very cold. There's only one thing to wear, as far as I'm concerned, out in the cold, and that is mittens. Mittens like this, where all your fingers are together inside, stay extremely warm. They're all together like that. That's the warmest you can be. So wear some mittens. I've had times outdoors where my mittens have gotten wet. Tell you what I've done, which I've found is found warmer than gloves, is put on a pair of wool socks on my hands. Honestly. They'll keep you warmer. You can ball up your fist in there and stay warm. So, for the hands, wear mittens. For your feet, first of all, I totally suggest wool socks. Wool has a lot of advantages outdoors. If it gets wet, it dries out. It can still keep you warm even if it is wet, but a good pair of thick wool socks, make sure the bottoms aren't worn out, uh, is always a good investment and a good thing to wear. Now, there's two types of boots I've worn in the past few years. I only wore these boots once these moon boots. They're inexpensive, they're insulated, there's a lot of insulation inside here, but the problem I've had is they don't have support. My ankles really bothered me out on the ice. Walking I found to be very difficult in these. Uh, walking isn't really easy necessarily in felt pack boots, but these, these are, are lacrosse iceman boots, and we found these to be uh, one of the warmest boots on the market. The advantage of felt pack boots, here I can unlace these, they have a, a leather upper top on them and they're rubber down below. Well, of course, that keeps uh, the water, a couple inches of water won't get your feet wet, but these are the felt packs. I can just pull them right out of here. That goes inside the boot. It's important at the end of the day to take the boot off, to take these felt packs out Put them by the heater, a furnace, use a, a blow dryer, a hair blow dryer, something to dry these out because if you put them on and they're wet, you're going to be colder than ever. But each day if you dry these out and have dry felt packs inside, I found these to be the warmest on my feet. So as long as my head is covered, my hands are in mittens, my feet are in felt packs, I'm all set. But what about the rest of your body? Is it, is it all that important what you wear? Well, you look at the ice fishermen out on the ice, you see they're wearing lots of different types of clothing. Which is best? Well, you can see there are lots of styles and colors to choose from, but I would say most ice fishermen wear coveralls as their outerwear, a one-piece suit of some type that may or may not be waterproof, but one-piece suits are warm. Now, here I am wearing my wool jacket, just put down a cold fish, put on gloves with fingers. I tell you, I paid for it that day. This outfit was not as warm as I needed, but I was warm here. I'm wearing a two-piece Cabela's insulated Gore-Tex suit, lots of clothing underneath. That wind couldn't get to me, and I stayed warm. Believe it or not, a rain suit as outerwear can also be practical for bucking the wind. 
One thing you couldn't see there was what the fishermen were wearing underneath their outerwear. Well, they're wearing underwear, of course, long underwear. There's all different kinds. There's inexpensive kinds on the market. I got a kind that you've probably seen in magazines. It's called Daymart long underwear. I frankly haven't worn anything else in the past 10 years. It is extremely warm. Now, this is my second pair of Daymart long underwear. Those of you who have some, I'm sure you've done the same thing. You've thrown them in the dryer once, well, they end up about this long. So don't ever throw Daymart long underwear in the dryer. But this is, this is the kind that I've worn, and it really doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference because if you have your head covered and your hands and everything, you're going to be warm on the ice. But what if, and a lot of us feel this way, that's not enough? We want to be even warmer. Well, what can you do about that? There's outside sources of heat you can bring with you. Of course, an easy thing to do that, uh, that a lot of anglers do is carry a thermos, or a, this is a vacuum bottle, I guess. It's a Coleman vacuum bottle. But a stainless steel one you can toss around, and it can keep a lot of liquids inside which can warm you up. What about alcohol? Hey, save that for after fishing, because frankly, alcohol thins your blood and you may think you're getting warmer, but you're not. You'll actually be colder if you drink any alcohol when you're out on the ice. What about hand warmers? This is really a sore point with me because I've tried them all. My hands have been cold. Here's one. Maybe you've seen them in the store. These are solid hand warmers for a solid type of fuel. What you do is you take this little stick and you light it. And I don't have the hand warmers. I've, I've thrown them away. I've probably thrown them about 20 or 30 feet. But this is the little container that they go in. I'm serious. These things are, I find, extremely irritating. I thought the solid fuel hand warmer would stay lit, but I found these things went out. There's the old Johnny hand warmer. You've seen these little bags, and they contain the magic gas hand warmer inside. Uh, I've bought several of these over the years. And in the jumbo size, of course, I wanted to keep really warm. Inside, these, they're both the same, but inside there's this little heater unit. You can see this is all charred. I've burned the living daylights out of this. Not only that one, but this one. This won't even stay on here. I'll probably beat it to death. I've bought numerous little uh, heating units for these things, and I frankly, they're a great idea. In all due respect to the Johnny Company, I bet they've sold millions of these things. I can't keep these dumb things lit. And they've really bothered me over the years because at the times when I'm the coldest and I've needed them the most, that's when they don't work. So the problem I've had with hand warmers of all types is that they've been unreliable, difficult to, st to light, difficult to keep going, and boy, when they go out, you really freeze. Now is the chemical age, I guess. These are the, the things I've found to be the best. There's all kinds of companies that put these out. Uh, Game Tracker here in Michigan puts these out. These are called disposable hand warmers. I would just open up the bag here. All you do with these, and they might cost 50 cents or so a piece, but let me tell you, you can count on them. A little bag of chemicals, and you shake it like this. Just shake it for maybe 30 seconds or so and get these chemicals mixed up. And I'm not kidding, after a couple minutes, this thing really gets warm. And you can put it in your pocket. Uh, they make little heat pads here that are curved for your boots. Oh, I've had them in my boots, I've had them in my mittens, I've had them in my pockets, and they're great. Now you can say 50 cents a piece or so, they're expensive. Not out on the ice, uh-uh. They're worth a couple bucks a piece out there, let me tell you, when you're cold, honestly. So they might seem expensive at home, but not when you're out ice fishing. Now, if these little personal hand warmers don't work for you, you want something more, there's, here's a catalytic heater. This is a, a gas operated by uh, propane cylinders here in the back. There's also propane heaters you can get that are uh, infrared type heaters that are really warm. Uh, and I, I recommend those if you want a, a real good blast of a heat source. But there's something else that ice fishermen use. And let me clear this off here. There's little ice fishing sleds and they use a lantern, this Coleman lantern that goes inside here. Now the lantern, of course, gives off light, so as the sun goes down or early in the morning, and you can see what you're fishing for, but it also gives off quite a bit of heat. That's why there's just a little metal grating over the top here. You sit back on this edge of the stool, you can drop fish in here and keep gear in here, and feel the heat come up here, fish over the front like this. You see a lot of fishermen out on the ice doing this. This is an excellent, way to keep warm, have a place to sit. And what about these hot seats? These, these are something. It says, hold between your hands and feel the heat. 
Do you know what you're feeling? You're feeling your own hands. That's all there is. There's no heat generated. If you open these things up, it's, a, it's like a, a, one of those ice chests, those styrofoam ice chests that they break it up and put it in here. It's just insulation is all it is, but it feels warm because it's reflecting your heat back to you. So this is the scoop on keeping warm while you're ice fishing. What are the principles? What are the basics? Well, first of all, you want to have some sort of carbohydrate type of breakfast with pancakes, oatmeal, that type of thing. You want to keep your head warm with a, a knit cap, some type of uh, highly insulated cap like that. With your hands, wear mittens. On your feet, wear some sort of felt pack that has, uh, is rubberized so you don't get wet. The rest of your body, wear some sort of coveralls with long underwear, whatever you need to keep your body warm. For the rest of it, the hand warmers, the heaters, that's up to you. But I tell you, if you're warm, it doesn't matter if you catch a lot of fish or maybe any fish. You're going to have a great time ice fishing outdoors. All right. Thank you.